Now let us move on to the next chapter that is body fluids and circulation and this comes under the human physiology chapter number 18. So the word itself is saying so here we are discussing about the body fluids and their circulation. See when we look at the composition of our body about 50 to 70 percentage about 50 to 70 percentage of the total composition of our body is water. So about 50 to 70 percentage of our body it is made up of water. And all the living organisms they require the constant supply of the oxygen, nutrients and other essential components. But how are these essential nutrients reaching the body cells? It is through the fluids which are present inside our body. And thus these fluids, these fluids, majority of these fluids, the majority composition of these fluids is nothing but the water only. So these fluids they act as courier inside our body. That means they drop off the essential nutrients to the cells. They will be dropping off the essential nutrients to the cells and in turn they will be picking them up from so what they will be picking up from the body cells they will be picking up the metabolic wastes which are secreted by the cells during the metabolic activities and like this uh, the fluids which are present inside our body they will be acting as courier so here it will be so these fluids they will be delivering the essential nutrients what are the essential substances usually oxygen it is necessary for our body cells to uh, perform its daily activities, metabolic activities. In turn, it also requires the nutrients and other substances. And thus, these fluids, these fluids, they will deliver these materials to the body cells. And after receiving all these essential nutrients and oxygen, these body cells, they will be performing certain metabolic activities. And during the process, during that process, metabolic wastes are released by the cells and again these metabolic wastes it is toxic see aerobic respiration takes place inside our body cells by utilizing the oxygen and after aerobic respiration the byproduct released are carbon dioxide water with the release of energy energy no doubt it is used by us to perform different activities but how about the carbon dioxide See, carbon dioxide, it is a toxic material or toxic gas which is uh, secreted by our body cells. It should not remain in our cells for a longer period of time. And thus it has to be eliminated out. But how these gases are eliminated out? Again, through the fluids. So there are certain fluids, we will speak about that. So these fluids, they will carry, they will pick up this carbon dioxide or metabolic waste and they will actually, they are involved in the elimination. They are helping this, our body system to eliminate this metabolic waste out of our body. So this is why I call this fluid as the courier. And you also know that our body, it is made up of 50 to 70 percentage of water and also these fluids these fluids they also allow our cells to communicate with each other so these fluids they also allow the cells to communicate with each other by sending the pockets of information so how does these cells send information to other cells how do they communicate it is by, by sending hormones. So these cells, they communicate with the surrounding cells by sending certain information again through the fluids. Again through the fluids. So in the form of hormones. In the form of hormones or chemical substances. This is how our cells, they also communicate by using the medium as fluids. So here fluids, they are also helping our cells to communicate with each other either through hormones or certain chemical substances. And I am speaking about the body fluids. So here I am speaking about the body fluids. The term body fluids is a generic term. So there are different types of body fluids in our body. What are they? Here you have come across the bile. Bile. So this is also a body fluid which is secreted inside the liver. 
so it is secreted by liver cells and what is the function of this bile it helps in it helps in breakdown of fats so it helps in the breakdown of fat and then and then tears you have come across the tears and sweat so what is the function of this tears and sweat they are having antibacterial properties antimicrobial they are antimicrobial in their properties and they are alkaline in nature they will be maintaining alkaline ph on our skin and inside our eyes so whenever we encounter the pathogens these tears and sweat they break down the uh, disease causing pathogens and i told you they are antibacterial anti microbial in their nature function and then we also have come across the synovial synovial fluid where is the synovial fluid it is present it is present in the joints so this synovial fluid it is present in the joints and what is the function of synovial fluid it helps in the lubrication so as it is present in the joints when we are doing physical activities like walking running or climbing up the stairs so there is a chance of friction there is a chance of rubbing of these two bones to each other so to avoid that rubbing or friction in between those two joints so here synovial fluid will be present which provides the lubrication so that those bones will not touch either each other they will not i mean for, there will be no friction in between them and not only that there are still more more number of fluids present inside our body what are they so pleural fluid pleural fluid where it is present it is present in the pleural cavity of lungs where it is present it is present in the pleural cavity of lungs and it is also present in it is also present in pericardial fluid there is also the pericardial fluid where it is present it is present in the heart and peritoneal fluid is present peritoneal fluid is present so it is present in abdomen it is present in abdomen so and also you might have heard about the csf that is cerebrospinal fluid cerebro cerebrospinal fluid where is the cerebrospinal fluid present it is present in brain and spinal cord it is present in brain and spinal cord see pleural fluid pleural it means lungs the pleural fluid which is present in the pleural cavity see if this is the lungs there is a cavity present in between these two membranes and this fluid is called as pleural fluid and here it is present in the lungs whereas pericardial fluid it is present on the heart peritoneal fluid in the abdomen and cerebrospinal fluid in brain and spinal cord so all these provides lubrication so all these provides lubrication so that so that and also in addition to the lubrication see peri pleural fluid it provides lubrication and all these pericardial fluid and peritoneal fluid they acts as shock absorbers so they acts as shock absorbers and then cerebrospinal fluid which is present in the brain and spinal cord they are nourishing in nature so they are nourishing in nature which provides nourishment to the brain so these are the different types of fluids which are present in our body still there are many fluids present inside our body and now let us know where these fluids are present inside our body are they present only inside the cells or are they present only inside the vasculature so now let us know where these fluids are present inside our body okay so based on whether the fluids are present inside the cells or outside the cells these fluids can be these fluids can be 
intracellular they may be intracellular or extracellular intracellular or extracellular if the fluids are present if the fluids are present if the fluids are present inside the cells inside the cells such type of fluids it is known as intracellular fluids so such type of uh, fluids it is known as intracellular fluids it can be written as icf see so here this intracellular fluid it is the largest composition of the body so body fluids about 40 percentage so it forms about 40 percentage of total body weight so about 40 percentage of total body weight is intracellular fluids that means which are present inside the cells and the composition of these cells it varies between the cells based on the type of cells so it might be neurons or it might be heart cells heart cells so based on the type of cells the composition within the cells within the fluid it varies so this is about the intracellular fluids and actually it composes it composes about 25 liters of blood okay now let us move on to the fluids which are not present inside the cells but these fluids are present outside the cells so those fluids which are present outside the cells or in between the cells are known as extracellular fluids what do we call for them they are called as extracellular fluids and it can be written or it can be abbreviated as ecf what do you mean by extracellular fluids these are the fluids these are the fluids which are present outside or in between in between the cells outside the cells or in between the cells so here about 20% of total body weight are uh, these extracellular fluids they com their uh, composition is about 20% of total body weight total body weight and these extracellular fluids they can be again differentiated into they can be again divided into interstitial interstitial fluids intravascular fluids intravascular fluids and plasma so what are the different types of extracellular fluids so they are inter interstitial fluids intravascular fluids and plasma these are nothing but the different types of extracellular fluids what do you mean by interstitial fluids the word itself is saying interstitial so in latin language the term interstitial it refers to gaps so the term interstitial refers to gaps that means you might have now guess the position or the place where this interstitial fluids will be present yes these interstitial fluids they are present in between the cells that is in the gaps of cells if these are the cells there will be gaps present so in these gaps this interstitial fluids will be present and then now let us move on to the intravascular fluids the word itself is saying intravascular in the sense these fluids will be moving around through the vasculature through the vasculature that is through the veins through the arteries so the those fluids which are moving around the body inside the arteries and veins so the those are nothing but the intravascular fluids and plasma you all know that plasma it is the fluid part of the blood and 
this plasma it is non cellular and non living component of the blood and we shall discuss about this in detail in the further classes and what is the use of extracellular fluids see these extracellular fluids here i'll write extracellular fluids it can also be called as intercellular fluids intercellular fluids so what is the use of these intercellular fluids what is the use of this intercellular fluids or extracellular fluids see i told you all the living organisms they require the constant supply of the constant supply of oxygen nutrients and other essential substances so the supply of these substances to the body cells are done by extracellular fluids so the parcels see here the delivery of these essential nutrients to the body cells are done by which kind of fluid it is extracellular fluid that is intercellular fluids through the intercellular fluids and in simple organisms in simple organisms like sponges and sea lentrates and sea lentrates here what happens water is circulated through the canals and thus through the canals this water it reaches the body cells where exchange of these materials takes place so in case of simple organisms like sponges and sea lentrates how the transportation of those materials takes place there will be the water canal system present and through these canals water will be circulated and this will reach the body cells where the exchange of these materials takes place in such organisms whereas in higher mammals whereas in higher mammals like humans humans how are the how are these materials supplied to the body cells here blood blood acts as the medium of supply so in higher organisms higher mammals like human beings blood it acts as the transport medium of all these essential substances so blood is the medium of supply of these essential nutrients to the body cells